<laughs> the Sopranos is a classic mob drama which follows the life of New Jersey mob boss Tony Soprano. As a boss, Tony has many underlings working for him, capos, soldiers, associates and his consigliere, and he also has many connections outside of his family, such as the New York Lupertazzi crime family, run by the pragmatic Carmine Sr. Carmine is as old school as it gets in The Sopranos. He appears level-headed, keeps a low profile, is calm, rational and business oriented very rarely allowing his emotions to get the better of him. At least that's the impression we get from the little we see of him in the show. Though their relationship is often professional, Tony and Carmine have had several run-ins in the show, always over a matter of business. Carmine would not allow his emotions to get the better of him in mob dealings, and he was willing to compromise and settle if it was for the greater good. However, he also utilised opportunities to make his opinion of Tony Soprano's Jersey family known, such as when he tells Carmine Jr. that they are glorified crew. This is a statement repeated by Phil Leotardo in the final season, a character who makes his first appearance in season 5 in the same episode where Carmine dies. So in other words, Phil was in prison for 20 years, seemingly never encountered Carmine upon his release, and yet he quotes Carmine on the DeMeo family, highlighting that Carmine Sr. must have had this opinion for decades, long before Tony became a boss. Carmine also slyly exerts power moves over Tony, by telling him a Don doesn't wear shorts. A humiliating remark for a boss of a family to take, it must make Tony wonder what the Lupertazzi say behind his back, Five fucking families and we've got this guy wearing shorts in Jersey. Another interesting scene is when Carmine discusses Tony's blackout with him, where he talks about Tony's spells and him seeing a psychiatrist. Carmine plays it like he's got professional concern for Tony, and it might actually be genuine, but one scary interpretation could be that Carmine is basically telling Tony, I know everything about you. As he says, everyone knows. He's a slippery fuck, that one. Carmine is completely business oriented, focused on profits and net income. He's never involved in any kind of controversy, we don't hear about any personal issues of him and until his death his family is run orderly and it's only after he dies things fall apart in New York. Tony is close friends with Carmine's underboss Johnny Sack who is also a pragmatist. However, Johnny's weakness is his love for his wife Ginny Sack who he loves dearly and never cheats on. When he learns that one of Tony's captains, Ralph Ciferetto, made a fat joke about Ginny, he is infuriated and he storms his way to Carmine, wanting for him to sanction a hit on Ralph. Ralph is in charge of Jersey's Esplanade construction racket, a highly profitable scheme which could get messed up if Ralph was to suddenly disappear. So let's take a look and analyse this fantastic scene. Before we begin, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification button for more videos. Without any greeting, without any warning or explaining his reasoning, Johnny walks up to Carmine who is enjoying some afternoon tea, leans in on the table and says, I want you to sanction a hit on Ralph Ciferetto, completely out of nowhere. Already, Johnny's approach and attitude is disrespectful towards his boss, and it only gets worse. Carmine is bemused. Are you fucking kidding me, he says. He violated my wife's honour, replies Johnny. Johnny's obviously made it out to be an incredibly huge deal, a humiliating ordeal, a horrendous insult from which one can never recover, where the accused must be burnt at the stake. But what it actually is, of course, is an inappropriate joke about how fat Ginny's ass is. Naturally, Carmine's reaction is, Ralph slept with Ginny? It's a hilarious comment, an absolute baller, not only because of the nauseating visual imagery it provides, but because Carmine almost looks disgusted himself, like he's about to follow up his comment with, ew. The way he says it is so funny. It's like he's saying, why the heck would anyone want to sleep with Ginny? However, what Carmine has actually done here, probably unknowingly at this point as he doesn't yet know what Ralph has done, but what he's done is he's raised the bar when it comes to Ralph's insult. Johnny is livid, Carmine can see that, but the actual affront by Ralph is maybe a 4 out of 10, a harmless insult which Ginny didn't even find out about. Whereas the suggestion that Carmine comes out with is a 7 or 8 out of 10, sleeping with the wife of an underboss of another family, a much superior family. Think of it like, say, I don't know, you come home to tell your dad how much it's going to cost to fix your car which you've just crashed. Let's say it cost £1,000, but you tell your dad it actually cost 800 and then later tell him that it was actually 1K. He's going to be furious. But let's say you tell him it was £2,000 and then later you say it was 1K. 
Chances are he won't be as mad. And in fact, it will actually be relieved that the cost wasn't so high, even though in both situations, the cost was the same. Weird example, I know, but it's all about expectations and relativity. And Carmine is waiting to know how Ralph violated Ginny's honour. And his mind is in a place concerning adultery, not a joke, which is where Johnny is coming from. Johnny Sack has already lost this debate before he's even told Carmine what the insult was. You can even see Carmine's brain working throughout the scene, his estimation of this entire affair is plummeting. He starts off thinking that Ralph might have raped or slept with Ginny, and then it's, oh, he must have made an unforgivable remark, something disgusting, but when he finds out what it is, it's simply a fat joke. Carmine can clearly see Johnny isn't with it here, he's too emotional and set on getting the okay for the clipping, and as any normal person would, he asks what Ralph said. Johnny is angry that he has to repeat the mug, asking, my word isn't good enough? To which Carmine responds by putting his underling back in his place, coolly saying, not if you want him clipped over it. So Johnny is then forced to repeat the joke, which is a great psychological tactic to enforce on someone when they're fuming with anger, simply because taking a moment to go over the event which made you angry can calm you down. You actually suddenly realise it isn't a big deal, that it's actually quite trivial, and in 20 years you're not going to still be angry about it, so why be angry now? Johnny reluctantly tells Carmine the joke, and like a boss, he doesn't laugh, instead remaining stone-faced. Maybe he didn't understand what was supposed to be funny, which is why John then has to explain the joke to him, explain the implications. But in that moment where the two men stare at each other with poker faces, it's a battle to see who will cave first, who will blink. How will Carmine react, Johnny thinks? Will he immediately sanction the hit? Will he blow his top off with rage? The reality is that Carmine is probably dumbfounded that such a minor joke has gotten John all worked up like he is. But given how emotional he is, he can't say that right now. So he says nothing. And Johnny is the first to crack, most likely thinking Carmine doesn't get it and he has to lower himself and explain the joke. Johnny's expression after this is like, can you believe this Carmine? Can you believe the balls on this guy to say that? But Carmine doesn't flinch. Instead explaining, calmly, rationally, that he can tax Ralph conceding that the remark was highly inappropriate, probably to calm John down a bit by showing him he's on his side. But he makes it clear that killing the man is out of the question. Carmine even says, you want, I'll demand he's taxed. Not, I'll demand he's taxed. Highlighting that even taxing the guy might be a stretch in Carmine's mind, that he won't go to those lengths unless Johnny asks for it, which shows you what Carmine thinks of this entire situation. He was happily enjoying his tea and now he's having to calm down his underboss like he's a school kid. Johnny then says, is it all just about money? Which, to Carmine, it actually is, but he's not going to say that. To be honest, this comment from John is actually quite degrading. It's like he's implying Carmine has no honour or sense of ethics, that he's always chasing the dollar, and Carmine probably doesn't help when he says, I'll crack him good, I'll ask for 200 grand, showing that it is all about the money. It also highlights how far apart on the spectrum the two men are. Johnny thinks that this is an insane insult that must be punished with death. Meanwhile, Carmine thinks it's a little opportunity to make a little extra cash at the next business meeting with the Sopranos. And 200 grand is an insane amount of money for a fat joke. Most people in the world never see that amount in their life. Mobsters are always insulting each other. Their vocabulary is filled to the brim with profanity. And here's a rare opportunity where Johnny can profit from this. He should have taken the money and run. If he had calmed down and thought things through. He would know that most of his money comes from construction, and Ralph is a big reason for that, so keeping him alive is in his interest. Not to mention an extra 200k and whatever other leverage New York can squeeze out of Jersey. Everyone will forget about the joke one day, and Ralph would still get his punishment. Heck, if John was still so bitter about it years down the line, after Ralph outlived his usefulness, he could have him clipped then. And he also should have taken Vito's advice, not the captain of the good ship Lollipop, but Don Vito Corleone, where he says, never let anyone outside the family know what you're thinking, after his son makes an emotional outburst in The Godfather. By making such a scene out of all of this, by making it known to anyone and everyone that Johnny wants Ralph dead, Tony Soprano actually uses this after he kills Ralph after his and Ralph's fight. In a meeting between Johnny Carmine and Tony, Tony blames, or at least implies, that New York had something to do with Ralph's disappearance, and he even tells his own crew this. And why would anyone doubt it, with John throwing his toys out of the pram for everyone to see? Back to the 200k. 
And this could really have helped John and his family down the line when his assets are seized and Ginny struggles financially after John's incarceration. And Carmine is thinking, this guy wants to take out Ralph over a joke when we make millions from a racket he's in charge of? Ralph is the one character that really tests the principles of La Cosa Nostra because he gets away with so much that would have gotten him killed because he makes the one thing which the mob values above all of the principles, money. Anyway, Johnny is then disrespectful by shouting at Carmine, saying what's next, you get to fuck her for a million? It's ironic because he's insulting his boss here, and yet an insult is what this entire situation is about. But you can see John's principles at work here. If a financial value is going to be placed on an insult, then what would Carmine's reaction be if Ralph did actually sleep with Ginny? And Carmine's response is probably the best line in the whole scene, where he says he wants to fuck her. Again, as if it's shocking that anyone would want to do it with Ginny. Come on, Carmine. Ralph is sick, but he isn't that sick. I always thought that Carmine was playing dumb on purpose here. Of course he knows that Ralph doesn't want to bang Ginny, but by saying that he might wake Johnny out of his irrational anger and realise the absurdity of this demand to kill the guy. And John's response is telling. He says, I'm talking about my wife's honour here. My honour. He brings it around to himself. And I kind of feel this is where the issue actually is. It isn't that John can't take someone saying something about his wife, much as he loves her, but that someone dared to insult his wife. Johnny Sack. It's an argument that arose from John's ego. He thinks he's going to look like a chump if he doesn't do something about it. If today his wife is a joke, tomorrow he's a joke. And that can't happen because he wants to be sitting where Carmine is sitting in a few years. And obviously there is the fact that he does love his wife and he isn't going to put a price on her honour. Carmine is having none of John's emotional outburst, but he's not going to tell him to calm down because that would just make things worse. But this conversation is going to take place on Carmine's terms. He will dictate the flow of the conversation. He'll control it and slow it down, which he does so by taking a badass slip from his drink. It also gives him a little window to work out what he's going to say to John. He then explains the financial implications of murdering Ralph, which again is ironic, because Johnny didn't feel the need to explain what Ralph had said, and yet Carmine here is explaining his decision to not okay the hit. Carmine is calm but firm, and he leaves John, who is usually so good with words, without anything to say. So he asks for a sit down and walks away. If you'd like to see more videos of me dissecting scenes from The Sopranos, let me know which you'd like me to take a look at. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.